The eyes of the world today stunned by this image. This was debris from a meteor racing toward Earth, streaking across the sky there, crashing into the ground in those woods. This sizable meteorite fragment from a remote part of space is a relic of the immense explosion over Russia. Imagine waking up to a day etched in mystery. Over a century ago, an explosion rocked Siberia, sparking debates and investigations. Known as the Tunguska event, this bizarre incident continues to puzzle scientists. Some speculate it was caused by a meteoroid or comet, while others propose alternative theories, such as a black hole or even extraterrestrial activity. Regardless, its enigmatic nature persists, captivating curiosity and inviting further exploration into one of history's most intriguing natural phenomena. History. On June 30, 1908, early in the morning, people living near Lake Baikal in Russia saw something strange in the sky. It was around 7.17 a.m. when they noticed a bright blue light moving across the sky, leaving a trail behind it. As it got closer to the horizon, there was a huge flash followed by a pillar of fire that lit up the area with a red glow. This pillar split into two parts and then disappeared. About 10 minutes later, there was a loud sound like cannons firing, and it shook the ground, knocking people over and breaking windows even hundreds of kilometers away. The explosion was so powerful that it was recorded on seismic stations across Eurasia, and its shock waves were felt as far as Germany, Denmark, Croatia, and even Batavia in the Dutch East Indies and Washington, D.C. Some people estimated that the shock wave was as strong as an earthquake measuring 5.2 on the Richter scale. For several days that followed, the night skies in Asia and Europe glowed brightly, and people could take pictures at midnight without using flashbulbs. Experts think that the glowing effect in the sky might have been caused by light passing through ice particles high up in the atmosphere. These ice particles likely formed because of the explosion's extremely cold temperatures. A similar phenomenon was later observed by space shuttles. Even in the United States, there were changes observed in the atmosphere's transparency, suggesting an increase in dust particles. At the time of the explosion, Siberia, where it happened, was not densely populated. But there were still eyewitnesses who saw and felt the event. They reported seeing the sky split open, fire coming down, and feeling intense heat. Some people were even thrown off their feet by the shockwave. One witness, S. Semenov, described feeling intense heat and hearing loud noises like rocks falling from above. He even saw hot winds racing between houses and damaging crops. Another witness, Chuchan, described waking up to strong winds and seeing trees falling and branches catching fire. He thought he saw a second sun in the sky. Newspapers at the time reported unusual events, like bright lights and loud noises, in various villages near the explosion. Some people heard thunder-like sounds, while others felt tremors in the ground. Buildings shook and windows shattered. It was a terrifying experience for many, who thought it was the end of the world. After the event, there were different theories about what caused it. Some thought it was a meteorite impact, while others suggested a volcanic eruption or even a collision with a small black hole. However, due to the remote location and the political situation at the time, scientific investigation didn't happen until nearly 20 years later. Scientific Investigations Since 1908, researchers, mostly in Russia, have penned around 1,000 scholarly papers regarding the Tunguska explosion. The understanding of this event's cause and magnitude today relies heavily on post-event damage assessments and geological studies due to the site's remoteness and the limited tools available at the time. More than a decade after the explosion, the first scientific examination of the region occurred, hampered by its isolation and political instability in Russia. It wasn't until 1927 that Leonid Kulik, a Russian mineralogist, spearheaded a survey of the area, though his team never reached the central blast zone. Guided by local reports, Kulik suspected a massive meteorite impact and persuaded the Soviet government to sponsor an expedition to investigate further. Kulik led a scientific team to the Tunguska blast site with the expectation of finding an impact crater. However, to their astonishment, no crater was found. Instead, they encountered scorched trees standing upright in a roughly 8-kilometer zone, 
with trees further from the center partially scorched and knocked down in a radial pattern. In the 1960s, it was established that the leveled forest spanned an area of 2,150 square kilometers, resembling a butterfly with a wingspan of 70 kilometers and a body length of 55 kilometers. Kulik identified holes in the ground, which he initially believed to be meteorite impact sites. However, subsequent expeditions disproved this theory, including the draining of a bog named Suslov's Crater, revealing an old tree stump instead of a meteorite crater. Additional expeditions in the following decade discovered microscopic silicate and magnetite spheres in the soil, akin to those predicted to exist in felled trees. Later expeditions confirmed the presence of such spheres in tree resin. Chemical analysis revealed high nickel proportions relative to iron, suggesting an extraterrestrial origin. Moreover, the sphere's distribution in the soil aligned with expectations from a meteoroid airburst. Chemical analysis of peat bogs also yielded anomalies consistent with an impact event. Isotopic signatures of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen at the layer corresponding to 1908 differed significantly from adjacent layers, with notably high iridium levels. These anomalies were attributed to fallout from the explosion, with nitrogen believed to have been deposited as acid rain. However, dissenting voices emerged as some scientists reported different isotopic compositions and questioned the observed anomalies. Additionally, a boulder found at the event site, dubbed John's Stone, was proposed as a meteorite remnant. Nonetheless, oxygen isotope analysis suggested a hydrothermal origin. Theories. In 1930, British meteorologist F. J. W. Whipple proposed the idea that the Tunguska body might be a small comet. This comet, composed of dust and volatiles like water ice and frozen gases, could have been completely vaporized upon impact with Earth's atmosphere, leaving no clear traces behind. By the 1960s, Soviet Tunguska investigators generally accepted this theory. Moving to 1978, Slovak astronomer Luber Kresak suggested an alternative hypothesis, proposing that the Tunguska body was a fragment of Comet Enki. Comet Enki, known for its short orbit within Jupiter's path, is associated with the Beta Taurids meteor shower, coinciding with the time of the Tunguska event. The trajectory of the Tunguska object appeared consistent with what would be expected from a fragment of Comet Enka. In 1983, astronomer Zdenek Sekanina challenged the comet hypothesis. He argued that a cometary body traveling along such a shallow trajectory through the atmosphere should have disintegrated, whereas the Tunguska body seemed to have remained intact until reaching the lower atmosphere. Sikanina proposed instead that the evidence pointed to a dense rocky object, likely of asteroidal origin. This asteroidal hypothesis gained further traction in 2001 when Farinella, Foschini, et al. released a study suggesting an 83% probability that the object followed an asteroidal path originating from the asteroid belt, rather than a cometary one. This brought into question the nature of the Tunguska body, with proponents of the comet hypothesis suggesting it might have been an extinct comet with a stony mantle allowing it to penetrate the atmosphere. However, the asteroid hypothesis faced its own challenges. Stony objects should typically leave a significant crater upon impact, yet no such crater has been found at the Tunguska site. Some researchers proposed that the asteroid exploded high in the atmosphere due to pressure and temperature buildup, completely disintegrating and scattering material into the upper atmosphere. This explosion would have caused the observed glowing skies. In the 1990s, Italian researchers examined resin from trees near the impact site, finding high levels of material commonly found in rocky asteroids, supporting the asteroidal hypothesis. Subsequent research by Kelly in 2009 pointed to the sighting of noctilucent clouds following the impact, a phenomenon caused by water vapor in the upper atmosphere, as further evidence for a cometary impact. Lastly, in 2009, a team of Russian researchers identified a near-Earth asteroid, 2005 NB-56, as a possible candidate for the parent body of the Tunguska object based on its orbit and close approach to Earth in 1908. Analysis of fragments from the Tunguska site conducted in 2013 
was also consistent with an iron meteorite, adding complexity to the ongoing investigation into the true nature of the Tunguska event. Reevaluating Lake Checo, Lake Checo sits as potential proof of the Tunguska meteorite's impact. Nearby, two similar lakes have been discovered, suggesting Lake Checo isn't as unique as previously thought. These lakes, including Lake Checo, predate the Tunguska event and seem to have formed naturally. These findings were detailed in the journal Docklady Earth Sciences. The prevailing theory attributes the Tunguska event to a celestial body's fall. Lake Checo's proximity to the event's epicenter led some to believe it was directly linked to the meteorite's impact. Researchers from various institutions examined Lakes Zapovednoye and Peyungda, near the supposed Tunguska epicenter. They analyzed Lake Checo's morphology and sediments, casting doubt on its association with the Tunguska phenomenon. Comparative studies revealed that Lakes Zapovednoye and Peyungda share similar shapes and depths with Lake Checo. Moreover, radiocarbon dating indicated these lakes' sediment ages, exceeding that of the Tunguska event. All three lakes' locations within riverbeds suggest natural rather than catastrophic origins. Dennis Rogozin, a scientist involved in the study, emphasized that Lake Checo's shape isn't unique and likely formed through geological processes. This challenges the notion of a Tunguska event origin. The collaborative study received support from the Russian Science Foundation and involved researchers from multiple universities. Contrary to popular belief, physicists from Krasnoyarsk proposed that the Tunguska explosion resulted from shock waves generated by an asteroid's atmospheric passage. However, researchers from the University of Bologna suggested Lake Checo could be an impact crater, albeit contested by some experts. While past research suggested Lake Checo's antiquity, recent studies have indicated a younger age. Recent studies have indicated a younger age. Acoustic echo soundings and magnetic readings support the idea of a Tunguska-related formation. We, we agreed uh, with the previous theory that the lake was very old, but on the other side, the shape of the lake is very unusual. A recent analysis of Lake Checo's sediment cores revealed pollen consistent with the Tunguska era though subsequent research suggested an older age based on soil composition. Furthermore, doubts persist regarding the meteorite's ability to excavate such a crater upon impact due to its mechanical properties. Alternative theories propose natural gas explosions or geophysical phenomena as potential causes of the Tunguska event. Astrophysicist Wolfgang Kunt suggested a massive release of natural gas from within the Earth's crust ignited by an external source like lightning. Similarly, the Vernishot hypothesis posits a geological mechanism for the event. Modern Technologies Scientists from around the globe have embarked on numerous expeditions to the remote Siberian region where the Tunguska event, a massive explosion, occurred. These intrepid researchers seek to unravel the mystery behind this cataclysmic event. Armed with tools such as measuring instruments and cameras, their quest is driven by an insatiable curiosity to understand what exactly happened on that fateful day. Traversing the dense forests and mosquito-infested swamps of Tunguska is no easy feat, adding to the challenges these expeditions face. However, despite the arduous journey, these scientists persevere, driven by the desire to uncover the truth behind one of the most enigmatic events in history. Through meticulous examination of physical evidence left behind by the Tunguska explosion, scientists have made significant strides in understanding this cosmic anomaly. By analyzing tree rings and studying soil samples, every piece of evidence is meticulously scrutinized to shed light on the events of that day. Furthermore, detailed geographical surveys have provided valuable insight into the scale and intensity of the impact aiding in piecing together the puzzle of what transpired over a century ago. Advancements in technology have revolutionized the way scientists approach the study of the Tunguska event. With sophisticated satellite imagery, high-resolution scanners, and cutting-edge simulations, researchers now have tools at their disposal that were unimaginable during the early days of Tunguska research. These modern marvels play a crucial role in unraveling the secrets of Tunguska, bringing us closer to definitive answers. 
NASA researchers have played a pivotal role in investigating asteroid airbursts using advanced computer models. Daryl Robertson and Donovan Mathias in particular have led the charge with their presentation titled Hydrocode Simulations of Airbursts and Tunguska Possibilities. Their analysis delved into intricate details of the terrain and tree damage observed at the Tunguska site, providing valuable insights into the significance of geographical features such as hills and swamps in shaping the event's impact. Utilizing the powerful AL3D Hydrocode from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Robertson and Matthias conducted a series of simulations to explore various asteroid scenarios. Notably, they ruled out long-period comets due to the improbable strength required to align with the observed data. Moreover, their consideration of forestry data allowed for estimates of wind speeds necessary to induce significant tree fall, underscoring the importance of understanding the composition and resilience of the forest ecosystem. In a complementary effort, Lorian Wheeler and Donovan Mathias utilized a rapid asteroid impact risk model to evaluate Tunguska-like cases. Their fragment cloud model provided valuable insights into the deposition of atmospheric energy and the altitude of airbursts. Through millions of simulations, they dissected the myriad factors contributing to the observed patterns of damage, striving to unravel the complexities of asteroid impacts. Adding another dimension to the research, Marion Nemec, Michael Aftosmus, and George Anderson employed CART 3D simulations to refine estimations of energy release and burst heights. By integrating terrain data into their analyses, they uncovered nuances in damage patterns previously overlooked in flat ground simulations. This emphasis on landscape features underscores the pivotal role of environmental context in accurately modeling the aftermath of asteroid impacts. In a separate facet of inquiry, Eric Stern and Chris Johnston delved into the intricate realm of radiation modeling and its implications for understanding the Tunguska event. Through their aerothermodynamic models, they predicted the thermal pulse experienced by the ground, accounting for the influence of ablation products on airburst altitude. Their findings revealed intriguing insights into the interplay between meteorite composition, entry angles, and thermal exposure, further enriching our understanding of these cataclysmic events. Collectively, these studies highlight the intricate interplay of myriad factors in comprehending the complexities of asteroid airbursts. From the topography of impact sites to the properties of the impacting objects, each facet contributes to a deeper understanding of these phenomena. As researchers continue to refine their models and incorporate new data, our grasp of asteroid dynamics and their potential hazards continually evolves, paving the way for improved strategies for planetary defense and mitigation, the Chelyabinsk meteor event, and Earth's history. On February 15, 2013, at 9.20 a.m., something amazing happened in Chelyabinsk, Russia. A rare event occurred. An asteroid exploded in the sky, surprising many people as they went about their morning routines. The residents saw a spectacle that few humans ever see. Strangely, it was quite similar to the Tunguska event and had people questioning whether it was in fact a recurrence. The event was accidentally recorded by dashboard cameras in cars all over Russia. These cameras, popular at the time, captured the asteroid's fiery descent and explosion. The asteroid streaked across the sky, leaving a blazing trail before exploding. This was debris from a meteor racing toward Earth, streaking across the sky there, crashing into the ground in those woods. Scientists later found out that the asteroid was about 20 meters wide. It entered Earth's atmosphere at a shallow angle, moving at an incredible speed of about 19 kilometers per second. As it entered the atmosphere, it started burning up, exploding about 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The explosion created a flash of light brighter than the sun for a moment. It also produced a shock wave estimated to be equal to 500 kilotons of TNT, about 30 times the energy of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. Luckily, the explosion happened high up, so most of the energy dissipated harmlessly into the atmosphere. If it had exploded closer to the ground or stayed intact upon impact, it could have caused catastrophic damage, possibly worse than any previous human disaster. However, the Chelyabinsk event still had significant consequences. 
The shockwave damaged 7,200 buildings across six cities and caused injuries to about 1,500 people who needed treatment at local hospitals and clinics. Many injuries were from shattered windows as people approached their windows to see the bright flash in the sky. The shockwave reached them moments later, sending glass shards flying and causing injuries. One unsettling aspect of the Chelyabinsk incident was how sudden it was. Despite advances in astronomical observation, humanity was caught off guard by the asteroid's arrival. Its trajectory from the direction of the sun made it almost impossible to detect until it entered Earth's atmosphere. Coincidentally, on the same day, scientists had predicted the close passage of another asteroid, 367943 Duende, discovered by a recipient of the Shoemaker Grant from the Planetary Society. This grant supports observatory upgrades for asteroid research. The Society aims to increase public awareness of the asteroid threat and advocate for more government funding for asteroid research. They are developing technologies like the NEO Surveyor spacecraft to detect potentially hazardous asteroids earlier, allowing for timely intervention to reduce potential harm. 65 million years ago, an asteroid about 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter hit Earth in what is now Mexico. The impact killed 70% of all species on Earth, including the dinosaurs. An impact of that size would have had devastating effects, and the geological record gives us some idea of what happened. The asteroid hit the water, creating mega tsunamis reaching from southeastern Mexico to Texas and Florida, and up a shallow interior ocean covering what is now the Great Plains. The blast would have thrown pieces of the asteroid and Earth so far that they would have briefly left the atmosphere before falling back to the ground. All this material would have been heated to glowing upon re-entry, heating Earth's surface and starting wildfires. Giant shock waves would have caused global earthquakes and possibly volcanic eruptions. A cloud of superheated dust, ash and steam would have spread from the crater as the asteroid hit underground in less than a second. This dust could have covered the entire surface of Earth for up to a decade, creating a harsh environment for living things. More importantly, the dust could have lingered in the atmosphere, blocking out the sun, stopping the photosynthesis of plants that the entire food chain depends on, and cooling Earth's temperatures for many years. Ecological Disruptions Caused by the Tunguska Event The Tunguska Event, a catastrophic explosion that occurred over a century ago, left a lasting impact on the environment within its blast zone. The aftermath of the explosion was stark and dramatic, Trees were violently uprooted, scorched, and stripped of their branches, transforming the landscape into a barren expanse devoid of life. The force unleashed by the explosion reverberated through the surrounding ecosystem, disrupting the delicate balance of nature in the region. Even today, the scars left by this cataclysmic event serve as a haunting reminder of its destructive power. The ecological disruptions caused by the Tunguska event extended beyond the immediate blast zone, affecting plant and animal life in the surrounding area. Some species were wiped out entirely, while others struggled to adapt to the altered environment. This event underscored the interconnectedness of life on our planet and the fragility of ecosystems. It highlighted how a single cosmic event could have far-reaching consequences for the natural world, emphasizing the importance of understanding and mitigating the risks posed by such occurrences. The Tunguska event has since become a focal point for scientific study, particularly in the field of cosmic impact research and risk assessment. Scientists have used the event as a case study to better understand the scale of destruction caused by such occurrences and to develop strategies for protecting Earth from potential future catastrophes. By studying the Tunguska event and similar events throughout history, researchers aim to unravel the mysteries surrounding cosmic impacts and enhance our ability to safeguard our planet. Ongoing scientific efforts continue to delve into the complexities of the Tunguska event and similar cosmic occurrences. Researchers are engaged in refining models and simulations to better understand the nature of the explosion and its implications for Earth. Through laboratory experiments and the study of other impact events, scientists are gradually piecing together the puzzle of Tunguska inching closer to unraveling this extraordinary phenomenon. Their tireless dedication brings us closer to understanding the mysteries of the universe 
and preparing for potential future events. Despite decades of research, the Tunguska event remains one of the most puzzling cosmic mysteries of our time. Its enduring impact on the environment, coupled with ongoing scientific investigations, underscores its significance in human history. As we continue to explore and unravel the secrets of Tunguska, we are reminded of the immense power and unpredictability of the universe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.